Hello, 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 hello everyone. Happy Wednesday and welcome back to another live stream pop-up art studio or virtual art hive, whatever you'd like to call it. Welcome back to it. I'm Mary Cronert and I'm here on behalf of the Living Room Community Art Studio. Hey, Courtney, so good to see you, welcome. Oh yeah, I'm so, so happy to be here today and sharing space with you and creating with you. If you're new to these live stream virtual art hive moments, basically this is where we get to hang out for an hour and a half. I'm going to be making something here in my living room studio at home and you can make art with me wherever you might be in your home. You can make what I'm making, you can do something else, you can do something different whatever feels right for you. That might be art. Hello, Shelley, welcome. It might be something else. Maybe today you'd like to dedicate your time to cleaning up or doing laundry or organizing your craft supplies. Again, this is time to create and connect and perhaps be inspired and provide a little inspiration for one another. So whatever feels right for you, you're the boss of you, do what feels best to you. And as always, we invite people to respect our safe space policy, just like it was at the actual studio space. We ask people to be supportive of themselves and other people, negotiate consent, all those lovely things that now have to happen by chat, but you know what, they can still happen. So when in doubt, ask, check in with people. If you see someone in the comments that you'd like to introduce yourself to, feel free, but please respect one another's wishes and help one another feel comfortable and safe here as much as we possibly can. And of course, when we talk about that being supportive piece, people are always really, really nice to other people, but sometimes we can be really hard on ourselves. So we remind one another, if your inner critic is being really, really loud today, let us know. And maybe we can talk to it, we can check in, we can see what it wants. If it has nothing constructive to say, then we'll kick it out. You get to stay and keep doing what feels right to you, but your critic takes a hike for the time being. And don't worry, it'll be back. Of course, other things that are helpful too. Hey, Laura. Oh, Brett, hello, Brett. So great to see you here. How lovely people being at, hanging out with me. And you know what? I'm so, so very grateful you're hanging out with me today because I don't know, if you're not in Oshawa, maybe the weather might be look different where you're at, but today here in Durham region, it is sunny and beautiful and, I, I don't even want to jinx it, dare I say it, it's kind of warm outside. It is a very encouraging spring-like day. So thank you for taking time out of your afternoon to hang out and watch this. Oh yes, hello Wendy, welcome. That being said, you don't have to hang out with me for the whole hour and a half. If you'd like to watch for a few minutes and participate and then do something else, you're more than welcome to do it. You can go and come back. If you need to run errands, that's okay too. Again, you're the boss of you, so do what feels right for you. And of course, if you need to leave, but you want to catch up on what you missed, this stays up on Facebook afterwards and you can always go back and watch it again. And you can even catch up with ones you've missed from earlier days on YouTube, where we post ones that we've archived for folks to watch. Whew. I feel like I've been, that was a lot of talking. That was a lot of talking. Let me turn it back over to you. How are you folks doing out there? <laughs> I'm working today at my office. I'm wearing my uh, lovely, lovely Project Impact Youth hoodie. Check it out, folks. This is lovely. This was an amazing little pay it forward gift from their community to ours. I am just so, Oh, this is a delightful gift. I love it so much. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Project Impact Youth and the amazing work that they're doing out there in the community, I totally encourage you to go check them out. Um, they even have a YouTube channel now where they're sharing fabulous stories from uh, community members where they've worked with over time or who have helped move the project forward, lived experience about what it's like. Um, to be a part of the communities they serve and work with. Please check out those videos. And uh, yeah, if you can, just, uh, you know, show them some love. Maybe even buy yourself a hoodie and support an amazing organization doing amazing work in South Oshawa with youth. Uh, youth who perhaps uh, have been marginalized only due to the neighborhood they live in, which is a weird thing that happens sometimes. Yes, Laura's, Laura's also saying it's a gorgeous day. Yeah, so it's a gorgeous day we are at too. I'm so happy about that. You went for a walk, found some beach glass. Oh, and hagstones, excellent. And now it looks like Laura is going to crochet today. 
The cat cafe needs more toys. Excellent to hear. That's a good sign when the cat cafe needs more toys. Yeah. One day I'd like to make it out to that cafe, that cat cafe. It sounds amazing. All right. Well, please feel free to share what you're working on as the stream continues. If you'd like to post pictures afterwards in our show and tell, you can do that too. And even post links to what you're working on. So perhaps your art isn't visual art. Maybe you write, maybe you create music. Maybe you have your own community project that you're really proud of or something that you're working on that you'd like to share. Put a link in. You can even share links in the chat here so people can visit and learn more about who you are and what you do and how you make all of our communities such amazing places to live, work and play and learn in. So. Thank you for sharing. And Shelly's saying good afternoon to everyone, hoping everyone is well and safe. Absolutely. Yep, all my lives matter in this world and so we need to respect and to be kind to everyone. I agree. I think we need, to, it's so important to be respectful, to try and understand before we judge. And every time we learn about what it's like to be someone else, our own knowledge grows of our community and about ourselves too. We run into our own edges sometimes. It's not always comfortable to learn about what it's like to be someone else but it always helps make things better. If anyone has any questions for me as we continue today, just let me know as well. I'm here chatting with you, loving to learn about everything that everyone's working on and also what it's like to be you wherever you might be. All right, let's get back to making some art then, shall we? Okay. Now, I've been thinking about making some, I don't know, getting back to basics with visual art. Last week, we created these lovely little art dolls. This one I keep, I've been keeping on working, keeping on working. <laughs> I've been continuing to work on throughout the week, adding little things here, there, adding some more beads, finishing these arms slash eyebrow things. It just keeps growing and evolving and I'm really enjoying this process. I think I might add some more embroidery to it, maybe even some other found objects. So if I wrap up what I'm working on today, I might return to this towards the end just to keep puttering away on it. And Courtney's saying, oh, lovely. You're going to make some flowers out of coffee filters. Courtney, that's one of my favorite things to do. I love it so much. And of course, with the warmer weather coming up, it reminds me of things like the Peony uh, Arts Festival that happens here in Oshawa. And again, just like last year, they're going to be doing a virtual version of it this year. And I'm sure a lot of events will continue to be virtual for the next little while. Hey, Nicole, good to see you, welcome. So keep an eye out on all the things you would normally love to do at this time of year. A lot of organizations are going virtual with their events until it is safe for us to gather and connect in person again. So just because the pandemic is still with us doesn't mean that we can't find ways to connect with one another and enjoy the things we love. If you're curious, just reach out to those organizations and ask. Just say, hey, is this happening this year? Because as a lot of you probably know and maybe remember, I can't believe how much time has passed, but it's been, it's almost a year. This Saturday, March 13th, will mark a year since, well, the pandemic kind of shut everything down for all of us, but also since the studio had to close. A year. When I think back to that time and how we were all feeling and everything we were having to do to take care of ourselves and when I think about where we're at today, I feel so grateful and so profoundly moved by how much more I appreciate life and my community today than I did before. And, and just, yeah, just a lot of gratitude for where we're at, you know, and the difficult times we've been through and how far we've come. and you know, just how patient and fabulous everyone has been with taking care of themselves and those around them. And Shelly's saying, I'm making, ah, oh, interesting. Shelly's making a self-care is important sign to remind me how important it is. I love that. I encourage that. I think that's a great activity. If anyone is out there and wondering, what should I do today? Maybe that's something you can do. Maybe you can make yourself a little reminder to put around the house to hang up or put on a shelf somewhere or maybe even carry in your bag or your wallet your pocket some kind of sign that reminds you that taking care of yourself is not only important but necessary self-care is health care that's the bottom line it's a beautiful thing to be able to do for yourself i love it and nicole is saying i just finished a doll oh excellent a doll from a show pretty hard cases it's a canadian show and i'm hooked i'm not familiar with that show 
As, as a Canadian actor, I think that's, uh, I should figure that out. I should get on that and look into that and see what it's all about. And Marta, hello Marta. So Marta's joining us, one of our fabulous placement students from Ontario Tech U, who, by the way, in the next coming weeks, we're also going to be having some live streaming Zoom events with our placement students. And uh, actually this Tuesday, so coming up Tuesday, which would be 13th, 14th, 16th, March 16th, Tuesday morning, March 16th, we are going to be having a good morning Art Hive Zoom. So from 9.30 till 10.30 in the morning, you can join me and our lovely placement students, Marta, Danielle, and Maddie. And we're gonna be hanging out in Zoom, making some art together, our virtual art hive, similar to this, but with our faces in those little boxes. <laughs> I think everyone's done some kind of Zoom experience at this point in time. So I don't know if I have to explain what that's like, but if you're interested, you're welcome to join us. That'll be this coming Tuesday at 9.30 in the morning. What a wonderful way to wake up, check in, get creative first thing and start your day on the right foot. And then Nicole saying, ha ha, happy national park. Happy national park, your lunch day. And lunch is over. Happy national park, your lunch day. Nicole, you might have to explain a little bit about what that means. Is it parking your lunch or is it like a national park day and that just also happens to be a day celebrating lunch or is it a day celebrating having lunch in national parks? That's a pretty, that's a, there's a lot in that title. There's a lot there. <laughs> oh, and Friday, for those of you who are interested, Friday is a plant of flower day. You know what? I think I will. I think I will start some seeds this Friday. Uh, starting with some some flowers and Nicole says the 13th is open. No, no, no. Open your umbrella indoors day. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know. Oh, it's pack your lunch day. Okay. So correction, it's not national park your lunch day. It's national pack your lunch day. So that explains everything. And you know what? That is a very good thing. Packing a lunch, even if you're on your own home, why not? Yeah, National Pack Your Lunch Day must have had some interesting... <laughs> this year must have been an interesting... Uh, there must be some interesting spin this year. For a lot of folks who are working from home, but why not? That could be a part of the ritual that keeps structure in your day. Even if you're at home, waking up, packing a lunch, putting it in the fridge, then when you have your lunch break, it's already there. It's been interesting. How have folks been... So here's a question for everybody. A year in... How are we doing with structure? Have we all found our groove with this interesting timey, wimey, wibbly, wobbly place? Have we found a way to create meaningful structure for ourselves that helps ourselves move forward? And you know what, as I'm chatting with you, I'm going to do a little bit of a, a warm up spiral ep ep uh, exercise just because I'm having lots of fun chatting. And, um, so I'm not quite ready to begin the main activity. So let's, yeah, let's do a little bit of a spiral warm up. Yeah, it would be interesting to hear what people's structure, like, are you able to work your way through your day now? Can you navigate your way throughout the day, feeling good, feeling strong, feeling focused, like still with that self care piece, right? Or is it something that we're still trying to figure out? Maybe it's a bit of both. So, hey, if you're out there, and you have tips, ways that you've found that are really helpful to making your day feel right, whatever that is for you, whether that's a kind of structural system that you've like built into your day. Maybe you have some special tricks and tips about working and getting the work done you need to do. Maybe you found a really clever way of ensuring that you take that self-care time for yourself. Because that's one of the things that can go by the wayside when we're all spending time at home. But a year in, I wonder how we're all doing. It's an interesting thing to reflect on. And packing your lunch, that could be an excellent part of a healthy structure in the day. I know that I've given myself a regular lunch hour since this has started, as much as possible. Every once in a while it needs to shift but taking a regular lunch hour where I unplug from everything else and I don't think about work, I found that has been really, really helpful. So my spiral warm-up activity 
This is a favorite of mine. I think introduced to me first by the great, the one and only Linda Berry, who's an artist, an arts educator, I believe a philosopher, an extraordinary human being and creator. And the idea is you put pen to paper or marker to paper or whatever you have on hand and you begin your spiral and you just let yourself focus on the lines, on expanding those circles, letting it be what it needs to be. It's like an active meditation. I find this activity really quite grounding and telling on days where I'm feeling a little jittery or my brain is really, really busy. Doing something even as simple as this can help bring me back down to earth, help ground me, focus me. Oh, my paper's getting involved in too, just curling around. I'm just gonna let it do that. And I can tell I'm learning about myself too as I'm doing this. I can see my tremors are having a, a little bit of a, an acting out today, making themselves seen. Interesting. Another reminder to me that if they're there, I've got to take good care of myself today. I've got to take care. So as you're creating whatever it is you might be creating, doing whatever it is you might be doing, I invite you to check in as you're doing that. Just observe if anything's different about the way you're doing what you're doing today. Is your body sending you messages that maybe you should pay attention to? All you have to do is notice. Just notice. And as you notice, you might also discover the remedy or the answer or the way you can move forward or address those issues in a healthy and meaningful way. So let's see. If you want to add breath into this exercise as your circle expands, allow yourself to breathe in and out with every circle of your, your spiral. Feeling the whole arm and the whole body get involved. The physicality of art making, such an interesting thing. It's not just about our brain or our hands. It's about everything else that's connected to those things. All right, there's a spiral. Hmm. And Laura, ah, oh, interesting. Laura says crocheting in the round. Agumergi, agumer. I think I know. Okay, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I know I've heard that before. Nicole might be able to uh, correct me on that pronunciation. It's a very relaxing spiral also. Absolutely. And Nicole says, yes. Nicole says, I do. Amigumur, amig okay, Cronert. Amigurumi. 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 Maybe? Well, Nicole does that all the time as well. The coloring, it's a very relaxing spiral also. So using fiber to create that spiral. And uh, it's uh, yeah, the counting of the spirals and the stitches, I imagine, can be very meditating. Absolutely, Nicole. Let me put my big pink spiral aside. 
And I think as the weather warms up, and maybe even to, on a day like today, if you were outside, you could even create some spirals with natural or found objects in the outdoors. I don't know if folks got to watch, but yesterday on Tuesday for our Instagram live stream, I interviewed M. Nowick, who was a coordinator at the Living Room Studio, uh, but has since moved a little up north and is working on creating their very own art hive up there. I've kind of like an art hive slash uh, nature farm education awareness kind of hive. Very, very cool stuff happening. But one of the things they were talking about yesterday was creating like the benefits of creating art that doesn't stay with us. So when we create art with found objects in the outdoors that we leave outdoors, we're not necessarily making it with the intention of it being seen by anyone. It's for the experience of it. And when we return to that art, it might be very different. Nature takes its own, has its own way with it. it it's a collaboration with the natural world. So it'll change and evolve. And I was just thinking as we were talking about you know, the different kinds of spiral art we can make about making stone spirals or perhaps pine cone spirals when we go for a walk. And another great reason to be outdoors and productive outdoors and in times like this, but also a very, very beautiful thing to do. So if anyone out there has done that before, I bet a few of you have, please let me know. If you've ever, like, ever taken pictures of your stone, like, spirals or perhaps sculptures or pine cone art that you've made out there in the beautiful wilds, let me know. I'd be curious to hear how it feels to do that and maybe we can all, I'll give it a go one of these days. All right, so what am I going to do here? <laughs> and Laura responding to Nicole saying, yes, I knew you would know it, thanks. And oh, <laughs> yeah, listening to me trying to pronounce it was, I imagine, highly entertaining. I apologize to everyone out there. Oh my goodness. Okay, so for today, the kind of main project I'd like to explore, I don't know if this has a name, actually. I've seen a number of people do it. Most recently, um, I saw one of the art hives, one of the other virtual art hives play with this idea. Um, and yeah, without a title, I guess I'll just describe it. It's making art with using the lines on crumpled paper, right? So for example, here's a ball of paper I crumpled up earlier, right? If we open this up, and flatten this out, what do we see? Now I might take this paper and I might, there's a lot of different ways you could do this. If you wanted to, you could get a pen and start outlining the different folds and lines that have been created by the cracks. You could fill it in, like I'm going to try doing today with watercolor to create something really interesting. Um, and it's sort of like scribble art where you just let yourself go, let yourself create these shapes and forms and lines on paper and then take a moment to reflect on it afterwards to see what, if anything, emerges. And today, of course, I am inspired by this beautiful weather, so I think I've got nature on the brain. So I'm going to be letting the paper guide me in the creation of something natural. I don't know what that will be. I don't know, I really don't know. And maybe, as I say that, maybe it'll be something completely different. But I'd like to explore what happens when I let something emerge from the piece. And it's one way, another, like another way of kind of outwitting that inner critic and challenging it a little bit and letting the art meet you where you're at and letting go of that control a little bit. So yeah, so I'm gonna put that aside for now and I'm gonna just start from the very beginning and crumple up a piece of paper just because I like crumpling up paper. All right, here goes. Okay, that alone is really, really fun. When was the last time you crumpled up a piece of paper? Super fun. And again, another way of introducing that physical element into art making. Okay. Interesting. 
So I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to see what's here. Yes, and Laura's saying, yeah, just about to say that about scribbles on paper. Exactly, this has a lot in common with that exercise. Coloring them in and finding creatures and faces, right? Laura gets it. And the, it's a way of just turning off or balancing out the sides of our brain, the side that always wants to know exactly what we're doing and what it'll look like in the end. And challenging, you know, challenge, I think it's that left side that wants to know those things. It's very specific. Well, we're going to challenge that and just let the right side take over a little bit and play. Hmm. Hmm. What can I see here? So if anyone else is seeing anything, feel free to chime in. Hmm. I think I do. And Nicole's saying the crumpled paper technique reminds me of how you start the guidelines in Zentangle. Really, Nicole, tell me more. I know there must be a lot of folks out here or out there who are familiar with Zentangle. But for those of for those people who aren't, maybe you can give them a mini explanation. I know this is also a great technique if you have an art journal or a junk journal and you're not sure how to, like where to start or what to do. That blank page is intimidating you. I think it was Barb Nash, one of our early community members who also suggested, why not crumple up the page? Then it's not so new. It's not so intimidating anymore. It's got some texture you can work with. And if that part of your brain was saying, oh, I'm worried about messing it up, well, it's already messed up. So what worse can you do? <laughs> and Nicole's saying, my mom isn't going to be commenting today because she's, oh, because she's taking a walk and listening. That's lovely. She's going to take photos too. That's so good to know. And that was actually another theme of the conversation we had with M yesterday, listening to nature. Now she might be listening to this as well, if that's what you mean, and that's awesome. But I think there's something so beautiful about learning how to listen. Not just to the words, not just to things people say, but to the world around us. The energy of the earth or the environment in which we find ourselves. Each, each one has its own energy. So one thing I'm going to do with this I'm going to let, I'm going to try one with watercolor. Letting the watercolor sort of find certain crevices and creases in the page. I'm going to fill them in. And depending on what paper you use, you might also, there might also be like, um, it might create very interesting angles and forms depending on if it's thicker or if it's thinner. I used, uh, this was a paper that was donated to the studio, but I think it is some kind of letterhead. So it's a little bit thicker than your normal bond or printer paper. It's a little bit, blue, it has this lovely kind of shade of blue, a natural blue that's already on the page. Which I think has, is helping me see spring or nature when I look at this page. Hmm. For folks who might just be joining us now, welcome. Thanks for being here at our virtual pop-up art hive every Wednesday from 2 to 3.30 p.m. If you'd like to let us know what you're working on, wherever you might be, please feel free. You're welcome to hang out, to chat, to join in the chat, or just to be wherever you are, quietly doing whatever you're doing, listening, appreciating, laughing at my pronunciation of Aragumari. I'll figure it out. I will figure it out. I will practice. I promise. I promise. 
And Nicole, with an excellent expansion on the Zentangle question I asked, Nicole says, you use a pencil to make four dots to mark the corners of your piece, then freehand lines to connect them, then you draw random lines inside to make sections. Using a marker or pen, fill in each section with doodles and erase the pencil. Interesting. So you're using that pencil to initially create form and structure, then using those guidelines as a way to kind of improvise, to give your, your brain that sense of safety to improvise within with pen. And then you can erase everything. All the pencil goes away and you're left with those fabulous designs that your brain figured out how to do. I like that. I like that a lot. All right. It's interesting the different things we can do to help ourselves feel more comfortable in whatever, whatever we're doing, whenever we need to feel more comfortable. Hmm. I've merged into sound effect making much earlier in the live stream than I usually do. Finding ways to work around that inner critic to surprise them, to outwit that inner critic. Always important, always important to practice ways of doing that. And the more, the more of an experience we have talking back to that voice and to having that sort of felt experience of feeling comfortable and confident with what we're doing, the easier, the, just the easier it gets to start to begin to do anything. Again, I'm not exactly sure where this is going, but to start, I'll just let this be. Yes, okay, I'm gonna set this aside. Am I? Am I gonna set it aside? Okay, just a little more futzing. Always add more later. Hmm. All right. And Carlos. Hello, Carlos. Carlos saying hola, y'all. Good to virtually see everyone. Hope you're having a good and safe week so far. Beautiful colors on there, Mary. Well, thank you. Very cliffside. Blue sky, green, grass, grass vibe. Absolutely. There's nature happening all around us. And I'm so happy that is warming up a little bit. So very happy knowing that we still might get another blizzard. This is Canada after all, and March is sometimes unpredictable, but I'm very hopeful, very, very hopeful that this is a turn for warmer weather that we're all experiencing right now. And Nicole saying, I bought the Colors of the World skin tone pack by Crayola a few weeks ago. I decided to try them out now, so I'm coloring in a coloring book with just them. Love that. Oh my gosh, I'd love to see the range of uh, those colors, Nicole, perhaps in the show and tell, perhaps in the show and tell. So I'm going to put this aside for now. And I do love the way some of those colors are pooling in the crevices of the paper and the crumpled paper. But I'll put that aside to dry and I'll come back to it in a little bit. And I'm gonna move on to this other one that I'd already crumpled up before we began.
This one, maybe I will try something different here. So instead of watercolor, you know what? Let's try, let's try working with chalk pastels. I had them pulled out earlier today too. Interesting. And Nicole's saying a lot of people zentangle on top of abstract dried watercolors. You know what? Maybe that's something I'll try next week. Hmm. The white doesn't really show up. So let's move on to, what should we do? Should we do a nice sunny color? Let's try this. A lot of the times when I make my abstract watercolors, I do hold on to them and I use them as bases for other things. So why not Zentangle? Zentangle is another one of those, or Zendoodle, whatever you like to call it, because I think Zentangle might be a, a copyrighted thing or a trademark thing, but you know, we all doodle. That's something humans just do. So finding new surfaces, new ways of elevating it, of bringing beauty to it, doing it with intention and, and joy, right? The joy of immersing yourself in something, of allowing yourself to explore something just because you can. All right. So I kind of like what happened there. That's an interesting, it's sort of brought out some of the creases in it. And Courtney's saying, I'm continuing to work on my strength cards from the wellness Zoom call last night for the living room. That's right, folks, if you are not uh, familiar with this, or perhaps you may have seen it on our Facebook page, but you haven't had a chance to participate. Every Tuesday night, we have uh, something called the Wellness Art Group or the Wellness Art Zoom, which is a Zoom group hosted by Caitlin, uh, Caitlin Karkish and uh, Catherine Valkanis, who are two of the living room's excellent, excellent uh, coordinators from the past. A lot of you may, have, may remember meeting them in the studio space. For those who never got a chance to be in the studio space, well, you can meet them brand new if you like. Every week they take turns hosting the group, although the next Tuesday, I believe, this Tuesday coming up, uh, they're going to be working in the group together, co-hosting, which will be a lot of fun, I think. And the theme of every night, every Tuesday, is around wellness and how we can use art to take care of ourselves and inspire ourselves, boost ourselves. And last night there were, I think, uh, on the Tuesday, Catherine did, Kat did strength cards. And it sounds like I got a little update just about, you know, from her afterwards. It sounds from what I heard like it went fabulously, but Courtney, it sounds like, sounds like it was really inspiring for you. You're just running with it. That's fantastic. Perhaps you can have your, your own personalized deck of cards that you can draw strength and inspiration from. I love that. Hey, Nikki. Nikki saying hi, popped in to say a quick hi to everyone. And there you go. She says, hi everyone. So hello, Nikki. Speaking of other familiar faces from the living room. And Carlos, oh yes, just commenting on the doodling is something us humans just love to, uh-oh, doodle. Yep, yep. Exits, stage left, smiley emoji. Yeah, yeah, Carlos, that's a good one. That's a, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> mm. What would I do without my funny, loving, supportive, wacky community? Gosh. Oh, and Courtney says uh, you're making the strength cards as a gift. Even better. I think when you find something that you like, if you can use it for yourself, it's a lovely thing to imagine. What can other people do with this too? I wonder, yeah, making a deck of strength cards for someone in your life that you love or that you care about. Such a beautiful thing. Personal, and it's a one of a kind gift. It doesn't cost a lot. Something that they'll treasure forever. Okay, now perhaps it's because I started with the yellow. Perhaps adding that orange and that reddy orange into it made me think of fire, but I'm beginning to see something circular emerging from this. Something maybe perhaps sun-like? Excellent. And Courtney, I don't know if Courtney, if you do want to talk a little bit, share like for folks who may not have known about the group, maybe you can share what's it like for you? Because sometimes I think people are a bit nervous to participate in a Zoom group. 
did you find is it something that you enjoy doing is it something that's easy to do what would you recommend what would you recommend to other folks who might be curious who maybe have been thinking about joining but haven't had the opportunity yet Hey, Crystal. Crystal stopping in to say hi. Crystal says, have a wonderful crafting time. Well, thank you. We shall. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you're at, Crystal. What do I want to do here? Let's see. You know what I... Uh -huh. So I'm going to treat this just like a, a scribble drawing and wherever I see, wherever the light is hitting it and a light, wherever the light is hitting it, I'm going to fill in with light and wherever the shadow is hitting it, I'm going to fill that in with a darker color. I'm just going to let it guide me in that way. And Courtney says, oh, excellent. So the cards are about it's and it's you seeing the strengths in others that they may not see. That's perfect. So when you're making your own deck for yourself, that's one thing. But when you're making a gift deck for someone else, it's a lovely reminder of what they might not, what they might miss because they're inside themselves. We can't always see. We don't, we're not always aware of what the things that we do or how we move through the world that we, that are strength based, that maybe inspire other people to find that strength as well. Sometimes it is easier to see that in others. Yeah, I can, I can see, I can see that. I can see how it's easy to recognize the strengths in other people we admire rather than being able to see our own so clearly. But perhaps if we can recognize the strengths in other people, does that make it easier to see them or identifying with, and identify with them ourselves? There's a question. When we admire other people, are we actually admiring parts of ourselves that we see mirrored in them? There's a question for everybody. What do you think? Inquiring minds want to know. And Courtney about the group, the Zoom group, just advice for folks who might be thinking about trying a Zoom group out, especially the wellness one. Courtney says, I encourage them to go for it. Oh, excellent. As it's a safe place to get what you need when you might not realize you need it. What a beautiful way of looking at it. And that, you know what, that's lovely. That also lets me know, it just reminds me how awesome Caitlin and Kat are as facilitators, because it is about what you need when you come when you enter in something like that, it shouldn't be something that feels restrictive or harsh or um, it should be about, uh, yeah, having that safe place to explore and, and give yourself time to identify what you need. That's lovely. Thank you so much, Courtney. And Courtney says, I am there every week and it's blessings to my heart. Oh my goodness. And to have like-minded people who meet you right where you're at. And Courtney made new friends. That's amazing. So again, these Zoom groups are opportunities to connect with people that you might not otherwise meet and have different kinds of conversations than you might, let's say, hear on a live stream. And Nicole says, I'm liking how my picture is turning out since it's a building. Oh, fantastic. So for those of you who missed it, Nicole is coloring in this picture, which is a building, but with that wonderful colors of the world, all those different tones of the human beings we have in the world, that new pack of markers from Crayola. Crayola, if you're listening, if you want to send some to us, hey, We'll share them with the community. <laughs> uh, and Courtney is saying, I hope the wellness group never ends. You know what, Courtney? There's been such positive feedback. I think we're going to keep it going. Uh, it's been a similar thing to the feedback we've had for things like this. There are things that have happened because of the pandemic that we've, we would never have done otherwise. And now that we've started doing them, people have really found that they enjoy them so much and that they play an important part in their week. So there will definitely be things that hang around after the pandemic's finished with and we're all safe and we can come together again in person. Certain things will always be here. And I think those wellness Zooms will be one of them, definitely. Oh. Now, if you are a morning person, just a heads up that Tuesday morning Zoom we're having this week, this coming week, 
please come on out and join us. I think we'll have a theme to start the day. So if folks, if you have like to suggest any themes for us to start our very first morning, good morning art Zoom, it'll be 9.30 a.m., 9.30 to 10.30. So what are the kind of creative things you want to do in the morning other than, well, maybe including drinking your coffee or having your breakfast? <laughs> If you've got ideas for themes, let us know. And I think if our student placements are, are still here as a part of the Zoom, Marta, if you're out there, you can take notes or maybe Marta has some suggestions. There's also going to be some really interesting, each student will be hosting their very own Zoom workshops for people. So these are based on the activities they've been doing so far. So Marta, for example, with the artist, the artist cards that she's been sharing every Monday, we'll be doing a group that focuses on building our creative strengths using um, a three, like I think it'll involve, well, I don't want to say too much. I don't want to spoil it. It's such an exciting idea, but this is what I can say. It will involve a wrapped canvas. It will involve embroidery. It will involve hanging out and stitching together over the course of three Zooms over three weeks, creating artwork connecting with one another, sharing experiences. That will be one of the Zooms that I'm really looking forward to. And another Zoom workshop, Danielle's will of course be uh, involve comfort characters, but using the idea of characters to create spoken word and to develop uh, kind of like an intro to spoken word for anyone out there who's been interested in writing uh, spoken word poetry or performing spoken word poetry. Now's your chance. You'll be able to have this workshop and kind of build your skills, dip your toes in the water. A really supportive environment. And then of course, Maddie's activity will have something to do with music, but we're not quite sure what yet. I'm not gonna spoil it, Marta, I'm not gonna spoil it. Did I say too much? Did I say too much? Well, Marta, since you're out there, what would you like to say? Is there anything you'd like to say? Or are there any questions you'd like to ask the community that might help inform your workshop? How about that? <laughs> I get so excited about what my students are working on and what my wonderful colleagues are working on. It's hard to keep it inside sometimes. <laughs> and Marta says, I said it great, but you know what? If this is a good time, Marta, if you do have questions or want that feedback from the community, <laughs> why not ask? And then Courtney is saying, interesting. So the wellness group, I think, is it part of your routine that you can't imagine your life without? Because it's all about routine. And with COVID-19, it's washed that out this last year. And you're absolutely right. That comes back to the what I was kind of inviting people to share at the beginning, like it's been such a strange year and it has been almost to the day a year now. How have we found structure? How have we created structure for ourselves so that our days don't just don't blend into one another? I know for me, it's been enormously important to have things like this or the wellness art Zoom, things that I know are out there that I can show up for, that I feel good about doing. You know, having routines that give me something in my life. They're not just to, you know, not just for the sake of doing things, but things that bring meaning to my life, that help me feel safe and encouraged and inspired. It's so important to have those pieces in place. So here we go. And I think it's a, a healthy part of adulting as well, isn't it? Getting to a place where, you know, when we, in absence of other people telling us how to structure our days or do what we need to do, that we can kind of realize what we need for our own wellness, what we need to be able to have our best days. Yeah. Oh, 
and Joe saying, Hi, hi, <laughs> Mother Mary, taking care of all her family. Well, I'm, this is a community. I'm a part of the community. You're helping take care of me as well, Joe, Father Joe. This sounds like some very strange kind of sitcom from the 80s that we're creating here. I'm not sure how comfortable I am with it, but I do appreciate you saying hi, Joe, and I am sending lots of love your way. Um, and maybe that's a screenplay you can write. I don't know, Joe, just saying. You do have such an extraordinarily creative mind. Like, one of a kind. I think it's well worth investing in it and writing. You do write poetry. Joe does write poetry, everyone. Oh, it's been so long since I've seen some of your new pieces. Oh, Joe, if you've got new poems to share, please feel free. How has the writing been going? And you might enjoy coming out to Danielle's uh, spoken word workshop Zooms, too. I'll keep you posted about those. And Nicole says, my cats and dog make sure I wake up early. I can relate to that without Alice and the cats. They give enormous structure and routine to my day, and they remind me not to take myself so seriously. They get me out of the house, get me into that fresh air, and just remind me to appreciate everything around me, even on days where I don't want to. I always find it really uplifting in the end. And Carlos says, this is a great and appreciated routine space. Oh, it's a great connection to tool, as are the other online sessions, and I, for one, really appreciate it so much, as I'm sure others do too. Carlos, that's lovely. I'm not fishing for compliments, folks, but, you know, I'll take them. It's good to know that what the living room is doing is helping or making a difference, because I'm sure, like all of you experience during these strange times when we don't have the same kind of uh, instant feedback we might get from being with one another in person, it is good to hear that things are helping, that things are working. I do appreciate it. And it helps us let, it lets us know what we can do more of and what we can keep building upon and strengthening. So thank you for that feedback. And Joe, Wendy says, this is my structure. Wednesday's with you all. Oh my goodness, Wednesday, Wendy. That's so beautiful to hear. Wow, that's, thank you for sharing time with us. And I'm so glad you're out there. And I know you create incredible things. If I, I was revisiting some other, art hives, that, uh, pop up art hives to label up for YouTube. And just looking back over the comments and hearing over this period of this year, some of the things, like we're being reminded of what everyone's been working on this year. And Wendy, you're definitely stretching the boundaries and doing so many different kinds of creative things. So again, you're inspiring me through what you're doing out there and what you share, what you choose to share. And again, to folks who might be dropping in or listening in the background, it's okay if you don't wanna join the chat. But I hope that even, I hope that you too, that you're getting something from this and that it's help, it's helpful to know what other people are working on and trying out there. Uh, it's always such a pleasure to be reminded of that. And you know, if you like this live stream, if you like hanging out here, we have introduced another one too, Thursday evenings, Thursday evening art jams from seven to 8 p.m. And I think the first month, the first Thursday of every month is going to be B doing sometimes hand lettering and fiber arts, textile arts, embroidery. The second Thursday will be Christine, Christine Weird or Christine Weatherly, as some folks might know her out there in the community. And of course she does all sorts of beautiful things like art journaling and printmaking and like so, so many things. And then the last two Thursdays of every month are a bit of a mixed bag. So we have guests coming in to do different things. And just again, to showcase all the wonderful creativity we have out there in the community, but it's another opportunity to connect and chat with one another, just to listen, to observe, to get inspired, you know. So every Thursday, 7 to 8 p.m. And Joe says, a work in progress. That's me. I am a work in progress. I'm going to put this aside now, come back to it later, but I'm going to bring back that other piece that I started with the watercolor. I'm going to begin working on it, I think, with a little bit of chalk pastel and pencil crayon. And Courtney says, I think for me, it's all about belonging to something that is okay, where it's okay to be me, and there's no judgment, and I can just sit or I can chat. It also is some time for me where I have interaction with other human beings. I, th I don't think you're alone there, Courtney. I think so many of us need that, and we might not need it all the time, but to give ourselves the, you know, maybe an hour or two, maybe, you know, a few times a week, maybe some of us need it every day. And there's certainly places online to find 
things like this, things like the Zoom Wellness Group. Like I know all the other archives, a lot of them are doing virtual archives as well. There's other opportunities to connect and share space, virtual space with one another. Um, just for that reason, because it's so important to remind ourselves that we're not alone and to have that interaction so we can practice being ourselves with other people and knowing that we are enough just as we are wherever we might be in our process in this process of humaning that as joe said we are all works in progress right it's a creative endeavor so finding finding ways like safe and manageable ways to put ourselves out there to show ourselves to people in ways that feel safe and comfortable to us that's so so important so I'm so glad that we're able to play a small role for folks like you, Courtney, out there, just even if it's a little bit, even if it's a little bit, it really matters. It matters to me. Um, thank you. And then <laughs> Joe says, my cat seems to find my lost puzzle pieces. Huh. Interesting. So your cats and dog wake Nicole up, but they help you find your puzzle pieces. That's a very, very smart cat. That's a very smart cat. If I could train my cats to find lost puzzle pieces or lost other things, that would be great. I don't know though. They seem pretty determined just to sleep in the sun and find comfy pillows to curl up on. Yeah. And you know, I'm not gonna take that away from them. That's a beautiful cat life. And they also remind me to take care of myself in the same way. Have a little nap in the sunshine whenever I can. Let's see, here we go. <laughs> and Nicole saying, my cats just whine at my door for food in the morning. I know, right? Yeah. Courtney saying, where do you find other art hives to join? Aha. So if you are curious, and there might be folks listening right now who are from other art hives. So if you're listening or watching along and you feel like putting up links to the work you're doing where you're at, please, please feel free. Um, we always love, 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 love having those links in the chat so other people can use them as resources uh so you'll find them you, there's well there's a couple of ways okay you can go to uh arthives.org maybe i can type that in right here while this is going on arthives.org can i do that will it let me it might have i don't know if it let me type that in it disappeared but arthives.org and oh, there it is. And this is a fantastic resource for everyone who's not like interested in creating or founding an archive. Maybe uh, you're interested in locating an archive near you that you can, you know, go to or, uh, you know, become a part of. Archives from all over the world. And a lot of those archives are now doing virtual archive activities just like this. So some of them might be listed on the site. I think there might even be I'm not sure, but I think there might be part of the site that is dedicated to, um, at this point in time, listing other art hives that are doing virtual engagement pieces. But you can also just look them up. If you see one that's interesting, send them an email and say, hey, are you doing any online work during the pandemic or after? For example, I know there was an art hive in Germany that was doing online art hives. There are, there are art hives in Montreal, plenty of art hives in Montreal doing virtual activities. Um, some of them are French speaking, some of them are English speaking. There are art hives in the States doing lots of fantastic uh, art hive activities. Sometimes it's just a matter of reaching out and asking. When in doubt, ask. When in doubt, ask. Reach out and say, hey, this is the kind of thing I'm looking for. Do you offer anything like that? And I know uh, some of you who've been listening or watching our live streams for a while now, you might remember uh, there, I interviewed uh, Momo and uh, Ana Garcia. So they're uh, two founders of the Spanish-speaking art hive, La Comunia d'Arte. Uh, and uh, again, forgive me for my pronunciation, but... I know that Momo has her pulse. She has her finger on the pulse of a lot of the other virtual art hives that are out there. So if Momo's listening, or if folks have, uh, perhaps you've connected with Momo through other ways during this time, 
Momo has a lot of fantastic information about other art hives. Again, Peter, who uh, sometimes joins our live stream, he has helped found a music hive, kind of like an open mic hive that's out there. So it's just about checking in with people to see, you know, what's available, are they still happening? Sometimes they have to take breaks, just like ours, for self-care and things like that. Let's see. And Joe says, I just wanted to add, Mary, amidst all of your suggestions of keeping our minds active, your voice gives us the reassurance that in time things will pass and improve. Oh, I guess what I'm saying, there may be some people just listening for that calming voice. Oh, the calming voice that keeps us engaged with other people. Do on behalf of everyone here or possibly away, thanks for the reassurance. Oh, Joe. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, that's, that means a lot to hear that. Thank you. Sometimes, not gonna lie, it does feel strange talking out into the internet, but I know you're all there and it feels like I'm having a conversation with you. So that's, that's what keeps me grounded. That's what keeps me feeling good. So thank you. Thank you for that. And things will be back to normal sometime soon. Normal may look a little different because maybe we've also learned some things during this time. Maybe there are things that we've discovered that we don't want to change, right? I'm sure each one of us has our own personal realizations of things we want to hold on to and keep once things go back to so-called normal in the world. Like, the Zooms, the wellness Zooms, and these live streams, things that we'll keep and we'll continue providing and sharing with people. There might be other things, but things are improving. Things are getting safer. There are vaccines out there right now, even in Durham region, being delivered and given to people. As we speak, things are getting better. And again, just to echo what I said at the top, I am so, so appreciative of everyone over this past year who's taken care of themselves. And, you know, perhaps in that process, we've had to compromise or sacrifice certain things to take care of ourselves. And more importantly, other people even, making sure that we're not making things unhealthy for others. How proud am I to be a part of a community like that? So proud, so proud. And, ah, hello, Prin, welcome. A nice little friendly wave from Prin. And Courtney, oh, Courtney agrees with Joe. Oh, and Prin, well, thank you. Oh my goodness, I have to practice saying thank you again. So hard to say thank you sometimes and just to accept that compliment, huh? Thank you. That's me practicing saying thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being out there, folks. All right, so my tree is emerging from this crinkly paper. And one of the things I love I about the crinkle paper effect is the, the different things that emerge and trees. It's hard for me not to see trees when I look at all those crinkle lines for some reason. It tells me where the branches need to go. I love that. Let's start adding some green to this. Yeah, things will get better. Things are getting better day by day. So just hang in there, folks. Hang in there, keep taking care of yourselves. Keep cultivating that love, that love for humanity, that curiosity, that compassion. I mean, I'm not the boss of you. You don't have to do that, but I invite you to consider that. I invite you to consider investing in that, because as difficult as things can be sometimes. And goodness knows we've all had difficult days. 
maybe difficult weeks or months. We can survive those. We can come through those. And maybe we come through stronger. Maybe we just come through a little more knowledgeable. But what we do know is that things aren't always difficult and they won't always be difficult. But sometimes we need to help one another and remind one another out about that. So thank you for being here and reminding me of that every week. Oh, hello, Isabel. Hello, hello. So here we go. Oh, it's so great to see you, Isabel. So nice to see you drawing. Thank you. Well, thank you for being here and visiting. Now, Isabel, 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 Isabel. Oh my God, it's so good to hear you. So good to see you and hear from you. I hear your voice in my head. So you might have some information about some art hives going on near you. If you want to share, please feel free. And again, I'll remind you, folks are just turning in now, perhaps other folks who have art hives, who are part of virtual art hives, who are, maybe there's a virtual art hive that you love going to and like being a part of. Please feel free to put the link in the, the thingamabig there. Nicole saying, I must have done my doll right. The, <laughs> the actress I based her on likes it. Oh, fantastic. So are these the crocheted dolls that you were doing? And that means you sent a picture or did you send the whole doll to the actress you admire? I love that. Fan art is a good thing. I've been thinking about that a lot lately. I think a few streams ago we were talking about that. The Like instead of just thinking about how we appreciate something, actually reaching out and letting them know, sending them a postcard or a message or a text, just to let them know how much we appreciate them. They could be celebrities, maybe they're just people in our community, friends, family members. Yeah, maybe art postcards. Maybe we should make art postcards one of these weeks. Because Canada Post, Nicole, I remember you got your postcard last week. I got my postcard this week. The free postcard that we can share with others. And I was wondering if we can improvise, if we can perhaps make take those postcards that Canada Post sent us and maybe uh, art them up a little bit more. Not sure about that. Let's see. And Nicole says, I'm going to try a crinkle paper Zentangle. Excellent. Oh, please post a picture. Let me know how it works out. <laughs> and Courtney got her postcard as well. And Nicole sent a photo. I'm enjoying focusing on Canadian content. Absolutely. That's an interesting thing. Now, there might be people listening or watching from other countries. I don't know if it's the same where you are, but I know... In Canada, sometimes, at least in Ontario, in my experience, um, we tend to be pretty reserved and we don't always let the, the people in the public eye know when we appreciate them. And sometimes, you know, it only happens when it's too late, only after the fact. Such an important thing to encourage the artists in our lives because they don't necessarily hear it. We sometimes think that they do. We must imagine people getting fan mail all the time. But it doesn't always happen. It doesn't always happen to the extent we think it does, especially in Canada, because we're such a small, we're a smaller population. And a lot of our culture and our creativity gets overshadowed by that big neighbor to the south. So if you have a, if there's a Canadian artist, any kind of artist that you admire or that you love that has made a difference in your life, I totally recommend reaching out and sending them some fan mail or letting them know the impact that their work has had on you especially during these difficult times where it may not be as easy for that artist to create what they create. Arts, culture is so important. So, so important to us. Mm, that's true. And Courtney's saying just about me wanting to decorate my Canada Post postcard. And you're right. Postage might be impacted by the weight. So what I do to it may impact. Mm. Yeah, we'll see. 
I could still throw a stamp on it. I don't mind. And Joe saying, what if we make a tall living room lighthouse so when the beacon flashes, it will be a constant reminder that the living room is there when we need that reminder most. <gasps> okay. Joe, you said lighthouse. I have such a clear image of that lighthouse. I'm loving it. How do we do that? Is this an art lighthouse? Is it a metaphorical lighthouse? Oh, wow. Okay. My brain, my brain is working. Maybe my next crinkle art will be, maybe I will see a lighthouse in it. I bet I will. I could totally see a lighthouse. Okay. I'll finish this one first and then I'll get on to that one. Well, isn't, aren't you folks here? You know what, Joe, I'm going to turn that around for everyone who's listening because in a way, at least from my angle, you are the light. I mean, not just you, Joe, Joe, you are a light, but everyone in our community, every single person who participates, who watches, who contributes to that creativity, aren't we the lighthouse? With regards to that, aren't we creating that beacon of light for everyone to see so that we always know we're not alone. We can turn to something somewhere and connect with other people. That feels, it feels like the community is the light of that lighthouse. Hmm. But who knows, maybe as we build the mobile art studio, who, there might be a lighthouse element. You never know. You never know. Maybe we'll have to build a light on top of the vehicle somehow. This sort of shines out. So when we're traveling places, when we arrive, we can turn on the lighthouse on the mobile art studio and connect with everyone. <laughs> and Joe says, I'll draw one first. And Joe, it sounds like there's also a poem in that. I don't want to be the boss of you here. I can't be the boss of you. You're the boss of you. But perhaps there's a poem in that, the lighthouse. We all need that light, don't we? And the light is always there. You may not always be able to see it at once, but sometimes it just takes that turning around, right? Yeah. The movement of a lighthouse is very, very meditative. And oh yeah, Joe Courtney loves that idea too. It says, awesome idea. <laughs> And Laura Ann Brown, mobile living room slash art car idea. Yeah, the living room mobile art studio is coming along, folks. We're still looking for the vehicle, though. So again, wherever you are in the world, we are looking for, I'm just going to put it out there because if you are the lighthouse community, fabulous community, you might shine a light and spot this vehicle before we do. We are looking for a used vehicle. We are looking for a, a used vehicle decent condition, but we're looking for a 10 or 12 foot cube van, aluminum sided, lowered, right? Because we want to convert this. We're also considering 10 or 12 foot step vans as well. So it's out there. I'm going to leave it out there again. Who knows where that vehicle is coming from? We're searching, we're seeking every day. We know it's out there. We just haven't met it yet. It's coming our way. And once it has come our way, we're going to be out in the community again meeting you literally where you're at, bringing creati like creativity and art to you. <laughs> and Joe says, I walked by Lakeview Park today and saw the one on the end of the pier. That's right. Uh, the lighthouse that's there. Sometimes I forget. Like we have a waterfront in Oshawa that's very, very beautiful. And I think it's not uncommon in the places where you live where we begin to take things for granted sometimes. We, f we begin to not see things. Does that make sense? I think everyone can relate to that one way or another. And I think sometimes with Oshawa that happens. It's easy to happen. And yeah, there is a lighthouse down there, isn't there? So every time I see that lighthouse now, I'm going to think of the community. Thanks for that, Joe. And Joe says, I'll work on that ASAP. Excellent. Yeah. Sometimes we just need that refocus. Barb took pictures in Vancouver of the many beautiful lighthouses. Oh, I can imagine. I've never been that far out west. One day, one day though. Who knows, maybe with the mobile art studio. Yeah. There's a sign that Paul Paget made, a beautiful uh, art piece with everyone who knows Paul, you're familiar if you are, if you do know him with his 
beautiful calligraphy type script that he uses in a lot of the street art that he does and uh, the prints that he does. And I remember uh, one of the things that was so lovely about the studio, you wouldn't always see all the artwork all at once because there was so much creativity happening all over the place. But it was something that I think just appeared on the wall one day and it was done on a piece of mat board. And the message and script on it was, we are this space. We are this space. It's not the building, it's not the room. What makes any art hive special, and I can certainly say what makes the living room community art studio art hive special, is the community that creates this space. For us right now, it's a virtual space, a year on into this pandemic, a year almost to the day where we had to close the studio. It is still the community. It is still the people that create this space. And I am so very grateful for that and amazed by that, always amazed by that. Amazed. I'm going to add in some definition in the, depending on where the light hits this, I'm going to start kind of showing the creases and showing the folds a little bit. So kind of, it's, it's interesting. I like how it's unfolding. Just letting the paper tell me what to do. And Nicole saying, <laughs> okay, this is uh, fascinating. So Nicole says, I enjoy shark movies. So I bought myself a pack of Sharktastic Valentines. <laughs> since they were 75% off. Why not? This sort of revisits that conversation that we were having with Courtney, but also with Shelley about self-care pieces for ourselves, the special things we do and have been doing during this pandemic to take care of ourselves, to remind ourselves that we matter. You know what? Little treats like that, they count. They absolutely count. <laughs> Why not? If it makes you happy, if it helps you take care of yourself and it doesn't hurt you, that's cool. And it sounds like uh, Sharktastic Valentine's might, that might fit the bill quite well. Yeah. And Barb saying, hi, Mary, thank you for joining me on your walk. How, what a wonderful honor that I went with you on your walk. That is such a beautiful thing. Oh, thank you. After this, I will be taking Alice for a walk. So I'm going to be in my own way, taking everyone here on my walk with me as well. I often do that after the live streams. We'll be revisiting the conversations we've had and the themes that have come up during the pop-up art hive and just letting them inform how I see the world. And I do hope it's, it's kind of beautiful here where we're at. It's looking a little bit overcast now, a little bit gray. But I hope wherever you folks are out there in the world that you are having a lovely day. And if it's warm, I'm so happy. Maybe you enjoy the cold and that's okay too. Not everyone likes the warm. But definitely looking forward to things growing. Definitely looking forward to that side of spring for sure.
So definitely having fun today playing with crink crinkled paper. And this activity was uh, inspired by another art hive. So if I find out, if I can remember which art hive it was inspired by, I'll definitely post it and let folks know. Courtney, well have a wonderful day. Thank you for participating and taking part. And Laura saying, I bought some art from my cousin's Etsy shop. And she sent, a, she sent a little extra piece. It was the perfect gift. Printed on vintage paper, it said, you're fine. Will be my daily reminder once I frame and hang it. Yeah, sometimes we just need to remind one another that we're okay. Everything's going to be okay. It's not always perfect, definitely not always. And there are difficult times on the way to okay and through okay. And okay can look like a lot of different things. But things can be okay. Just know that. If you're having a difficult moment or a difficult day, it's not always going to be like this. And there are opportunities to make change, to seek change, to seek relief, to connect with people who can help you who can lift you up. And I think likewise too, if you're having a great day today, let's appreciate that and let's honor that so that when those other more difficult days come along, we can go into that pocket, that storage of okay, of okay loveliness that we've had in the past and maybe boost ourselves just a little bit. But regardless of where folks might be at, whether you're having a difficult day, a good day, an okay day, you are okay. And while things around you might not always be okay, you are fine. You are perfect just as you are. You're definitely enough. I'm capable of so much. That might be a little bit prescriptive, but this is something I like to remind myself of as well. Because I think more often than not, we're very hard on ourselves and it's good to be reminded of the fact that our only, only job in this world is to take care of ourselves, to take care of ourselves so that we can take care of others, to take care of ourselves so that we can be there to enjoy the good times, appreciate the loveliness in the world, and if we don't take care of ourselves, Oh, there's always a way to recover from that too. We can always make change. But never feel bad about taking care of yourself. And let's see, Joe says, one thing this pandemic has made me realize more than ever is how important family and friends are. I know personally we have become closer and more attentive to things that may have got lost or put aside before. I agree. I think I, that resonates with me a whole lot as well, Joe. That sense of to be reminded of what really matters, you know? That question of what's it all for? Perhaps it's for love. Not love, necessarily romantic love, but knowing, you know, loving the people that are special in our lives, being able to care and feel cared for, to be close, to develop those relationships, to know that we can develop relationships, 
even in difficult times. Hmm. I can relate too, Joe. And Nicole says, I think I will put one of my Sharktastic stickers on my Zentangle. And there's a bright moment. I would love to see that, Nicole. So once this wraps up, and we are coming to the end, folks. It's 325, and I might go over a little bit as I put finishing touches on this. But yeah, if you'd like to share pictures of what you've been working on, please feel free. We do a little show and tell post on our Facebook page. Just a simple way for me to say thank you to everyone and to give people an opportunity to share projects you've been working on through pictures or links, or even if you want to just describe them, that's okay too. And you can also share links or pictures perhaps to other things that have been providing you with inspiration, that have been keeping you feeling healthy and motivated and uplifted during this time. Things that make you laugh. Why not? Uh... <laughs> oh dear. So that's a show and tell after this is done. Just a post on Facebook. And Joe, oh dear. First Carlos and then Joe. By the way, Mary Jo says, FYI, in case you need quick change, the laundromat offers change. Oh dear. You know, you're not, it's not, uh, it's not untrue. They do, they offer quick change. Yep, yep. Do you hear the collective groan? Like inside my head, there is a collective groan, but I appreciate it so much. <laughs> I appreciate the humor so, so much. Again, making one another smile, making one another laugh during difficult times. That's one thing I've been appreciating very much as well. Finding those moments of lightness, of humor. Yep, they matter as well. <laughs> oh, Joe. <laughs> Wherever we can get them, just appreciating what's around us, who is around us, who is a part of our community. You all matter so very much. I hope that during this time you've been able to create or enjoy some creativity, even if it's not producing or making something. I hope that you found this time a little bit relaxing, maybe a little bit uplifting, who knows? Maybe it's just help you stay busy or distracted you, all of that's okay as well. Thank you for spending time with me and spending time with our community. I think I will continue working on this and just adding color in, finding those angles around my tree, in my tree, on the landscape, and just building up the layers of color in a kind of abstract, interesting way. Hello, Emmett. <laughs> Emmett, hello, you did make it. There's, we're getting ready to wrap up, but hey, that counts. Thank you so much for dropping in and saying hello. What are you working on today? And you know what? You can show us if you want in the show and tell post that we post after this, because I know Emmett is a fantastic creator as well. There's so many fantastic creators in our community. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, this is the kind of project, this crinkle paper doodle, like scribble drawing kind of a thing. Definitely. It's something that it can just pull you in. I can see myself working on this lots and loads over the next few days as well. I love having a good project that I can turn to. Let's see. Something on the side that I can go to. Just keep working on. A nice little distraction, something to help me procrastinate too from all that other stuff, all the admin the admin of life and adulting. A little bit of art is distraction, never a bad thing. But this piece for me definitely speaks to spring. It's, it speaks to growth of possibility. Potential. Change. Positive change. 
right around the corner, folks. And Emmett says, working on my perspective today. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And Joe saying, thank you, keeping all of us happy. Again, this is not me. This is a collective experience, may I remind you. If I had that power alone, I would definitely be a superhero, but I don't. This is something we do and we create together. Just a reminder. So thank you to everyone, again, who contributes to this, who helps make this time so enjoyable and so special. It doesn't happen without community. And that's the truth. So definitely, folks, a reminder, if you like this, if you like this kind of thing, if you're interested in participating in more or watching or viewing more, we've got live streams now happening uh, Wednesdays and Thursday evenings. We've got the Zoom Wellness Workshop group that happens every Tuesday. That's the one that Courtney was talking about earlier. We also have some Zoom workshops coming up with our fabulous placement students and some ver like some Zoom virtual art hives that are gonna be popping up over the next few Tuesday mornings. So if you wanna wake up with art in your life, then join us at Tuesday morning, 9.30 to 10.30. And oh yeah, there's gonna be some uh, Instagram stuff happening too. Oh my goodness, there's so much stuff happening. It's hard to keep track of. I'm gonna be working with the Durham College Fine Arts students uh, they are going to be taking me through some guided activities on Instagram, providing instruction and kind of workshop. Uh, there's some, and it was actually Emmett who just reminded me of that because one of the workshop ideas is uh, still life drawing, observational drawing, which I haven't done in years. The next workshop I think is creating a visual, like a character. So drawing out a character, again, something that I haven't done in a very long time. And then the third workshop is painting with dots. So that like three really cool workshop ideas that will probably be happening on Instagram in a live stream or on Facebook. Keep an eye out for those events popping up on Facebook. If you're ever curious about wanting to know about what's coming up, uh, Facebook, just subscribe to our Facebook events page and you'll get a little alert every time there's a new event and then you'll never be out of the loop. But it's okay if you want to be out of the loop as well. You know, there's a lot going on in life. Do what feels right to you. <laughs> and yes, it is 3.30. Thanks for reminding me, everyone. Joe says, oh, Joe's getting a little bit French. So au revoir, Mary. Oh, German, auf Wiedersehen and ciao. Oh my goodness, hasta la vista. So many languages. I feel like we're traveling a little bit. Um, yes, all the same to you too, folks. Thank you so much for joining. And let's see if I can get a little close up on what I've been working on to just wrap things up. Yeah, a little bit closer, just to get some of that detail. I'm filling in, I'm just adding in some, listening to the angles on the page, where the light's hitting it, filling in the shadows and the shade to give it a little abstract color. Oh, I'm liking this technique so very much. I'm so glad that I experimented with it today. And I can't wait to try something new next week. Lovely. But again, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for joining today. Thank you for participating and being a part of, let's see, oh, what's happening? Come on, oh, flashing back and forth. We'll see what happens here. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for being a part of our creative community. I hope you had a wonderful relaxing or okay time and that this time we spent together helped lift your day up a little bit, even just a little bit. Remember that you're not alone out there. We're here too. And until we can connect and create with one another again in person, we look forward to connecting and creating with you right here online. Yep, and thank you, I agree with Laura, who's thanking everybody as well. Some great inspiration and ideas today. Thank you everyone and especially, oh, me? me for hosting? Oh, you're going to make me practice saying thank you again, aren't you? Okay, so this is for everyone out there, for you, for being so amazing, for making me, helping me feel so welcome here. One year on into the pandemic, hosting things online with you. Thank you. Thank you for accepting me into your homes, your spaces. Thank you for creating with me every single week, helping me to feel connected and purposeful 
and bringing that kind of peace and joy into my life that maybe, you know, I don't know. I know definitely it's been increased because of you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess that's it for today. Again, if you have pieces you'd like to put in the show and tell on Facebook, take a picture, put a link, shine a light on what you do because you are amazing. You're a powerful creator. And I'm just so very grateful that you're a part of our community. Take care folks and see you again real soon. Bye.